Mechanics and keywords are an essential part of card games. They bring diversity, depth, and can be fun to find synergies with. While new mechanics are developed with the meta and the future of the game in mind, the developers can't predict what obscure interactions millions of players around the world can come up with. Because of this, certain cards and keywords have become much better than they have any right to be. Today we will list 5 of the most overpowered mechanics and keywords in Hearthstone. Stealth An ability that prevents minions from being the target of enemy attacks, spells, and effects until they attack. Hearthstone is more unit-heavy than other games, and as a result, attacking is the primary way to deal with threats. Stealth provides a way to avoid this and allows you the opportunity to strike at the time that you want. With the right kind of additional effect, this can become too powerful. This is why most minions in Hearthstone which do have stealth don't have other strong abilities to go with it. A card like Shadow Rager, which, you know, just looks like a pretty bad card, is essentially a 3-mana 5-1 charge on delay a turn. The exceptions that prove the strength of the stealth is Shade of Naxxramas, a 3-mana 2-2 that grows over time, and Finja, a 5-mana 2-4 that summons two Murlocs on a kill. Shade was played to great effect in Combo Druid to push damage that cannot be interacted with and leave a large body afterwards. Similarly, Finja was played in any Finn Paladin, quickly pulling out Murlocs to both thin your deck and have them die for its combo. While strong, these cards were fine, because they were designed with the keyword in mind. The power of the mechanic is truly on display when you give stealth to a minion that did not have it originally. Cards like Vicious Fledgling that snowball hard can win you the game on their own. Imagine adapting into stealth as Vicious Fledgling against a druid. With a lack of any good answers, they will be left in the dust. Similarly, Midrange Hunter adapting a Tundra Rhino with stealth is probably one of the most powerful things you can do as the class archetype. As such a potent buff, you would think that this mechanic would be used sparingly. However, Conceal was something that was released with the game in the classic set. This card created a version of Miracle Rogue that was extremely frustrating to play against. In Hearthstone, the way you interact with your opponent's stuff is very binary. Like, you either hit it with a minion or you hit it with a spell. And mechanics like Stealth, these are mechanics that if, if I was a game designer in Hearthstone, I never would have put in the game to begin with. Hearthstone is a game where there's like two ways to target your opponent's thing. And when you include a mechanic that just says, you can't target my thing, you're taking what tiny bit of player-to-player -player interaction you have in your game to begin with, and you're reducing it by half or completely. The card was eventually Hall of Famed for being too oppressive, but was a good example about how you cannot give out evasion lightly. Aura buff or AoE buff effects. These are buffs that provide all of your minions on the board additional stats and the occasional effect. These are the cornerstones of aggressive and tempo decks, as they help minions trade efficiently or amplify the damage going to the opponent. Timberwolf enables Unleash the Hounds to become a very potent board clear. Murloc Warleader overstats your previously small Murlocs to overwhelm control decks and race aggro. These combos are not difficult to pull off, as you usually have two in the deck. But this is not limited to just aggro. Spells that provide AoE buffs can even make token and combo strategies more powerful. These cards have pushed Druid to the tier 1 spot multiple times. Thankfully, the abundance of AoE buffs in the game has made it so that one class is never the clear winner in this regard. However, there were some glaring exceptions. Crystal Core, nerfed twice as of date. The AoE buff is extremely unique and lasts for the rest of the game, leaving your opponent no way to deal with it after activation. When all of your small one-drops gain stats equal to 4 or 5 cost minions, they become a real nuisance. The card was nerfed twice but still saw play, and relief was the general feeling when this card finally rotated out. This is really one of the biggest problems, I think, with Quest Rogue. It feels pretty helpless when you play against it and you're playing anything but one of those aggressive decks. And it feels like there's very little you can do that actually matters. It sort of inherently makes games play out more similarly to one another because it makes cards essentially the same. You don't have any reason to play, you know, big minions in your deck because all your cards are big minions. AoE buffs have the opportunity to be fun and interesting when they are not just simple stat increases. However, these are harder to balance and plan interactions for. A happy medium has to be found where the card is beneficial enough to be played, but not incredibly so to the point of an auto-include. And when an effect affects the entire board state on your side, that can be a tricky point to find. Recruit, a keyword that summons a random minion from the player's deck, originally introduced in Kobolds and Catacombs. Around half of all cards that had this keyword made a splash in the metagame. While the design of the keyword is interesting, it is unfortunately very abusable. As when your deck has only one large beast, a card like Katharina can never roll low. Cult to Arms is one of the more unique recruit cards where you don't play it to cheat out big stuff, but rather build your board and thin out your deck to draw better cards in the late game. In fact, it was so powerful that it was used in aggressive decks like Murloc Paladin, mid-range decks like Even Paladin, and combo decks like the Four Horsemen Paladin. Even after a nerf, it still saw play. There might be the comment of, well, Murloc Paladin runs one drops, right? And they run two drop 
Murloc Balakras. But you know what's really good? Uh, getting Righteous Protector with it is absolutely fine. Uh, getting any of the Murlocs is fine. Because if this were like 4 mana, summon like actually 3 very reasonable Murlocs, and thin them from your deck, uh, that's like really worth something. There were cards before Recruit that shared the same concept, like Yasharaj and Meatwagon. Yasharaj was powerful in its own right and saw play in Big Priest, Big Druid, and Barnes Hunter. And Barnes had his own mix of decks that he was a part of, too many to name. While him and Yasharaj do not have the Recruit keyword exactly, they are still a good representation of how powerful and abusable the concept is. What is the ultimate Barnes dream? Barnes into Shadow Step into Barnes. Pull out two Blood of Ancients, 30 30 on turn 6 win the game. That is the dream. And the chances of that happening isn't even that low. Recruit Lee's standard with the introduction of the Year of the Dragon. However, we still have cards that achieve the same and may end up being just as broken in the upcoming year. While exploitable, this mechanic is still interesting and easily understood. And despite its strength, we fully expect to see it in some form in future sets. Hand Reduction meaning any card that reduces costs of cards in your hand or itself. These cards allow you to gain a significant tempo advantage by combining multiple cards or effects for a reduced or even zero cost. Cards like Emperor Tharsen have enabled many combo decks, giving combo druids significantly more damage even with just one Tharsen proc. On the rogue side of things, despite being a classic card, preparation was also very good. Prepping out a Vanish, a Myra, or a Crystal Core can be game-winning. If expanding the scope of things, cost reduction in general is extremely powerful. Getting a free taunt on the board or a free swarm of minions in addition to whatever else you can do is an extreme swing that can be hard to come back from. Corridor Creeper, the pre-nerf version, was put in every aggro and tempo deck and even kept in the mulligan. The first thing that comes to mind is that why would they ever actually print a 7 mana 5-5 five five that can get to 0 mana in the first place, right? So, it, at least they're changing it, but it's still kind of weird that they actually released the first version and was okay with it for like the longest time, right? There was even a card that was removed in the game's alpha that highlighted just how broken this mechanic is. Mana Spring Totem, a 4 mana 0 1 epic shaman minion reading your cards cost 1 less. This is not to be compared with the similar but different Sorcerer's Apprentice. Having the reduction beyond everything beyond just spells enables many infinite uninteractive combos. And this doesn't have a limit, so if you had like, if you had a knife juggler and then you know, if you played two of these and you had two pandas, you could just cycle the pandas and you could juggle the entire board to death. So, uh, even though this card looks like a piece of crap, it enables some infinite damage combos, so it's kind of dumb, but uh, hey, it's hurts though. The card was replaced with Farsight in the game's alpha. Ramp is the usual method of accelerating the number of things that you can do during your turn, but it usually comes at some cost or slight tempo loss. Hand and cost reduction is tricky to get right, as the number of things that it can enable are hard to plan and balance around. While unlikely that we will see a minion like Mana Spring Totem, more specific caveats like the one of Sorcerer's Apprentice are likely in the future. Finally, Charge an ability that enables minions to attack on the turn that they are summoned. While a cliche to talk about, nothing else comes close to the power of this keyword. The true problem lies not with the charge minions themselves, but the potential for charge minions to be combined with attack increasing buffs and copy effects, producing excessively powerful burst combos, which in the worst cases result in one turn kills. This lack of interactivity or any counterplay makes charge a concern for the developers, who have become increasingly reluctant to print new minions with unqualified charge, as well as nerfing numerous cards critical to charge based combos. That that being said, Simply Charge does not break a card. King Crush and Gromash Hellscream do not see as much play, because their cost restricts anything outrageous to be done with them. However, cards like Leroy Jenkins and Doomguard are costed lighter, and are thus better. Both cards have seen play in combo and aggro, and both have either been nerfed or put in the Hall of Fame. While Charge is oppressive and scary to play against, there are cards that can give other cards charge. Currently, the only cards that do this are Tundra Rhino and Shadow Madness. Hunter does not have many stat buff effects, so while Tundra Rhino is powerful, it is not too overwhelming. Similarly, since Shadow Madness needs to seal a specific minion from the opponent, it tends to be unreliable. There used to be two more cards, both from the Warrior class that gave charge to other minions that had no right to have it. Force on Commander and Charge, the card. That Charge is the kind of card that creates a design constraint on future cards. It's also a card that you, you know, ha may have a card that's like, oh, when this does this thing, you get some awesome bonus. When this attacks, you get some awesome bonus. Or something that, you know, whatever. You can even have like a, just a 1-1 one, one minion that's like, when this damages a player, they die. It's like, oh, it's a super cool card, but oh, if charge exists, then, bleh, you're dead. Okay, well, 
We can't have this if, if, if charge exists. So in sort of game design terms, you generally refer to that as a design constraint, because it's something that makes it impossible for you to make other cards. So getting rid of charge, or at least changing charge such that you can't just attack your opponent directly with it, uh, means that you can make other cards that could also be more interesting, uh, and you can't necessarily make it in a world where charge exists. The first version of Warsong gave all minions charge, enabling zero mana Molten Giants, attacking face, then bouncing them back with Brewmasters and repeating the process. It was later nerfed to give charge to minions with three attack or less. But once Grim Patron was released, with the help of a bunch of whirlwind effects and trading, Frothing Berserker, initially being a two attack minion, could do over 100 damage. This resulted in Warsong Commander being changed and made ultimately redundant. This, and for many other reasons, is why charge is used very sparingly on new cards. The Witchwood introduced Rush, a sort of fixed charge that can enable cards to only attack enemy minions the turn that they are summoned. While not as powerful, this keyword does have its uses, and serves as the final confirmation that charge is just too strong. And in general, on Hearthstone, some of the least fun things are charge minions and direct damage to the hero. Um, because you can't really um, interact with them in the way that you can interact with other things. You have to kind of set your defenses up a turn before you expect to see those things, as opposed to, oh, you did something, now I'm gonna react to it. Um, you have to play a Lothed before you think you're gonna get fireballed. You have to play taunt minions before you think you're gonna get uh, run over by charge minions. But there's other designs that we've been trying that we just can't do that, um, can't do because Warsong Commander exists in Warrior. Uh, granting charge is so powerful. At the end of the day, uh, we had a lot of things that we felt like were pretty important for basic cards and for this particular card, and we felt like, um, we needed to do something that broke the charge portion of the card um, to stop decks that we felt like weren't, weren't fun to lose to. And that was our top five. Let us know what you consider to be the strongest mechanic or keyword. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.